hi guys welcome back to our channel my name is Pearl and today I would like to talk to you guys about something that is very deep I would like to talk to you guys about my childhood trauma and how I am overcoming my childhood trauma it's been a journey I am still on that journey and there are so many people out there who are going through that journey I just want to share my journey with you guys so stay tuned I just want to welcome all of you to our channel for those of you who are stopping by for the first time welcome and please consider subscribing to our channel also to our existing subscribers who have been coming back to view our videos i just want to say thank you so much for always coming back to view our videos we really appreciate all of you new and existing um subscribers thank you guys and please we do not take you guys for granted at all. We do appreciate you watching our videos. And I wanna encourage you guys to watch the video to the end. It is, it is, it is very, very deep. So let's start. Guys, growing up, my childhood was very hard. It was very sad. It was full of abuse and trauma. And for those of you who are here for the first time, you can go back. I have spoken a bit about what I have gone through talking here on youtube there are some things you really cannot go into detail with but i'm hoping that you will understand some of the things that i am trying to convey to you so growing up i went through a lot of essay um somebody did that to me somebody very close did did that to me and i went through physical abuse i went through mental and emotional abuse i went through verbal abuse it was just it was just coming and coming and i went through it all and it was very hard as a child the essay my brain shut it off i don't know how that happened but i just did not remember it not until i had my first child the physical emotional and and mental abuse I remembered it all. I remembered it all throughout my life. I love to sing. I used to sing a lot. This helped me growing up. And one of the songs that I sang a lot was, I'm nobody's child. Nobody wants me. I'm nobody's child. And even today, right now I can speak about it. But even last month, when I was writing these things down, I was just crying, you guys. I was just crying. I was just crying and it was so painful to just write these things down and today I am able to talk about it because I have gone through a lot of stuff and we'll get to why I'm able to talk about it today freely um, if you see me looking this way I have everything written down and I just want to go through it step by step going through my journey from childhood to now it has been very hard and uh, i have been wanting to save myself i want to save myself because nobody's coming to help you nobody's coming to save you you have to want it you have to do it yourself and i wanted that and i went after it but i cannot take the full credit to myself i have to give credit to god because God saved me throughout all of this journey I remember I have gone to counseling I went to three different people and that did not help me the way that I needed the help it helped me to a certain extent but it did not help me to the extent that I needed help I remember one day staying there and praying to God and asking God Lord help me I need help I need therapy but I don't have the money to pay for therapy you need to help me you need to send me somebody who will help me do the therapy but somebody who will not charge me because I don't have the money and I tell you guys God made that happen in a previous video I spoke about how it happened so you can go back I will link it up so you can go back and watch that video so God sent me that person to help me free of charge. And I went through the 10 weeks of therapy. I'm just touching my computer so it wouldn't sleep on me. I went through 10 weeks of therapy and that helped me immensely. That 
gave me some freedom to speak about my abuse. And I tell you, when you start to speak about what you've gone through, the enemy doesn't like it. The same way the persons who abused you want you to keep silent. The same way the enemy wants to keep you silent. Because with your silence, he can use that against you. With your pain and your suffering, he can use all of these things against you. But when you start to speak up and speak out loud, he is not happy. I remember going to church and giving a testimony. This, on that day, they had corporate day of prayer and fasting. And I tell you, I gave a testimony and it was a powerful testimony. And the following week, the church was on fire. We stayed out of church for weeks not being able to return to the sanctuary because they had to fix everything and they had to get the green light to go back in the church to worship. And it was powerful, but the enemy didn't like it. Too many people were hearing my testimony. Too many people are going through what I had gone through and going through and they would get some strength, some light from what I shared. He didn't like it. So God saved me through therapy and speaking out. The attacks from the enemy came instantly. It came instantly, you guys. We have gone through so much within weeks and months. We have gone through so much. I remember one day I stayed there and I, and I was talking to God and I said, Lord, I know you are the son of God. I know you died on the cross for our sins. I know you are coming back again to save us. But Lord, to me, it's so real. It, it, it doesn't connect. It's like a fairy tale. And I said to him, Lord, make it connect. Make it real for me. Make it connect. Oh, Lord, I'm going to tell you. Be prepared for when you pray and ask God for something. And I'll tell you, we are never prepared. God made it real for me. God made me to come in, in an encounter with demonics. Yes, you heard me right. Demonic spirits. I tell you, a week from praying to God, we had an encounter. We came. I'm telling you that I have goosebumps on me. I saw the demonic spirits manifest. We saw it. And whilst the manifestation was happening, I called a friend and I said, pray for us. This is happening. And she said, let me call some other prayer warriors to pray. And she called two more people on the line. She connected. There were four of us on the line. When the prayers were going up, when the prayers were going up, the enemy started to mess with the line. I, I remember growing up, we had a radio, and sometimes you couldn't get the, 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 the stations properly, the, the, whatever you call it. You couldn't get it properly. And you would hear that scratchy thing and... This is how it started to mess with the, 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 the call. And it just scratchy, scratchy. And then all of a sudden, it went off. I couldn't hear them. And I was praying, Lord, please let them continue praying. Let them continue praying. And the enemy just grabbed my clothes during that time and said, I'm going to choke you. And when the enemy grabbed my clothes, manifesting through somebody else, grabbed, I had a dress on, it was sleeveless. When it grabbed my clothes to choke me, guys, I had two hands, two, my two hands, trying to take out that one hand that was holding my clothes and trying to grab it off of me. I could not. Then my son came to help and said, let my mother go. Let my mother go. We have four hands and it was a struggle. A struggle to remove to remove the one hand but eventually we did the enemy has been manifesting itself and angry at me and my family especially me so talking to God about making it real for me God did answer my prayer God did make it real for me he did show me that my child I am real and the enemy is real as well so what you have gone through, I have been there with you and I am still there with you, but you got to trust me. I will take you through. I will carry you through on the other side. Going through all of these traumatic things that I went through as a child, I had anger. I had frustration, resentment, 
sadness, fear. Fear was instilled in me. I had fear. I had depression. I had anxiety. And I was suffering immensely when I thought I had already dealt with this in the past. <clears throat> but I had not completely dealt with it. The enemy was using all of these things against me. So going through my 10 weeks of therapy and speaking out, the enemy showed up. The enemy showed itself. And you guys, I had to deal with this. Forgiving people is not easy, especially when they've done things like that to you. When I was going through all of these things, I had to reach out to friends for help. I had to reach out to friends for prayer. And me, those who know me, know that I am a very, very private person. I don't tell people what is going on with me. No matter what I'm going through, I keep it to myself. I keep it to myself. I talk to my husband. Some things I will say to my children, not everything, very little, but I keep everything to myself. But on this journey, I have learned to open up. When we, we were going through this, I had to call friends and say, pray for me. I had to call friends to come over to help me. I had to open up. I remember, I remember a Saturday, I called a friend and I said, can you, can you meet me? I want to talk. And I asked her to meet me and we met at a park. And I just started to open up. I was so sad that day, Lord. I was so sad. And I started, I was a mess. And I, and I started to open up to her and started to, to just talk to her and tell her some of the things that I had gone through and some of the things that God had brought back to my memory. And she was just encouraging. She listened to me. She took the time to come, to drive all the way to the park, sat down with me, and we spoke. And I really appreciate that. You know who you are. And I thank you so much for giving me that time, that listening ear, and just to talk to me and let me know that, Pearl, you're not alone. I'm here for you. Throughout this journey, I have acquired so much knowledge, better knowledge of who God is and how much he loves us. I have learned how to pray better. I have learned, not just learned, I have been spending more time in the word of God. And this has helped me because the Bible says, by beholding, we become changed. So the more I read the Bible, the more there are changes coming in, 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 in me. You know, I, I am learning how to pray God's words back to him. You know, and he said he, he will keep his promises. So I'm learning to pray and I'm, I am being a stronger person because of that. I am also learning to let go and let God. Letting go and letting God is not easy because when you've been abused, you are building up walls. You are thinking of protecting yourself. Nobody's going to protect me. It is me who have to protect myself. I have to do this. I have to be 10 steps ahead of those who will come. I have to know what you're thinking. I have to know what is coming next. But when it comes to letting go and letting God, it is hard. It, it was hard for me. And by the grace of God, I am learning to let it go. Because I am where I am today, letting go is much easier. Because I remember one day my sister was talking to me and said, Pearl, you have to let go. And I got really upset with her. And this sister, I can tell her what's on my mind. Be upset, but we never get vexed with each other. I will need some time to just relax, some time to myself, and then call and say, you know what? I'm sorry. The way I spoke to you wasn't right. And this is who I am. When I do something that's wrong, I, I quickly come back. And she said to me, Pearl, you have to let it go. I got upset with her and said, you thinking that I don't want to let go. I want to let go, but I don't know how. I did not know how to let go. God had to show me how to let go. And he's saying to me, he was saying to me, my child, let it go. Allow me to take control of it. Allow me to do it for you. Allow me to fight your battle. But because I had this fighting spirit in me, because I had gone through so much, I had to fight for my survival. I had to fight for myself. I did not know how to let go. But God has taught me how to let go and say, Pearl, relax. The battle is mine, not yours let it go i remember giving it to god and taking it back lord you do this for me okay lord i got it i can't do this but now i am learning to let it go and let god i am learning to forgive and truly forgive and i i believe that i am at that point right now um 
I remember there was a time I used to say, I forgive them. But then the slightest thing people would do, I would get angry. I never call them and say, I forgive you. I remember once writing, sending a text to each other and say, I forgive you. But that was not advice. I don't think at that time I had truly forgiven because yet still, when that came up, I used to be angry and hurt. And I remember going to church and... I remember um, the elder was talking and the people in the church, they were talking and, about how important it is to call the people. I remember there was a pastor who told me that once, but I did not do it. And here is why I did not do it. I was feeling so ashamed, so afraid um, because of my essay. When I told a lot of them said to me, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And guys, this cup, this cuts through really really deep knowing what you've gone through having the memories that you have and for somebody to say i don't believe you that did not happen it cuts really deep and it gives you this anger and i remember once i was saying praying i said lord the same thing that happened to me, let it happen to so and so, so that she can see and understand and believe me. But then I went back and I said, Lord, please don't let it, don't let that happen. Don't let it happen, Lord, because look at how I am. Look at the things I'm feeling. Look at what I'm going through. Please, Lord, do not let it happen. And I thank God that he did not let that happen because it's not a, 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 an easy nor a good place to be. So I remember when they were talking about you have to call the person or persons who've done you wrong and tell them, I forgive you. And when I heard that, I knew that I had to do that and I had not done it. And when the person finished, I said, what if you can't reach the person? Because one of the people, I did not have the number and I couldn't reach. They said, well, if you can't reach them, then you can tell God. But it will be better for you if you can reach that person. And here is why. Because if you reach that person, you have told that person. So the enemy can't use that against you. But if you just say, Lord, forgive them, the enemy will constantly try to use that against you. And I was like, Lord, you have to help me find a way for me to get in contact with that person. Because I don't have the number. I've asked many people for the number. And I, I don't have the number still. So I had done a seven day prayer and fasting. What God told me during that prayer and fasting is that Pearl, you have to heal the hurt. You have to heal. You have to heal the broken heart. So I was impressed to do another 10 days of prayer and fasting. And so I said to my husband, the two of us did the seven days. And I said to him, let's do another 10 days of prayer and fasting. But this time we will eat the, the seven days. We did not eat. All we did was drink a cup of juice in the morning and a cup of juice in the evening. And that was it for seven days. And so I said to him, let's do another 10 days of prayer and fasting. We will do it and we will end at three and then we will eat from there. So my husband was a bit hesitant and said, we just came out of, of the seven day. Let's wait a while. But when he went to church and he heard, don't wait. So he said to me, okay, let's go. So we started again the next day. We started and we had agreed to do a 10 day prayer and fasting and I thank God that we did that there are some that doesn't come out without prayer and fasting you need to pray and fast so I remember telling my husband that and we did it and during that 10 day of prayer and fasting they were talking um, about how the elder and the people was talking about how it is important to call the person or persons who've hurt you and to tell them that you forgive them so the following day, I, I was calling everybody. I started the night before texting and calling everybody for that particular person's number. Um, I had already called one of the people the Saturday and I spoke to her and that was fine. And I needed that person's number. So eventually I got the number. I had to call so many people to get that number. Eventually I got the number and I was not going to call that day. I was still hesitant. I was still, go my mind was like, wait, wait. But then on that day, it's like my spirit was 
pushing me pearl what if that person does not see the following day what if that person doesn't see the following day and that kept on ringing in my head pearl you have got to call now pearl call now and I was like, okay, Lord, I believe the spirit is impressing me to call now. So I am going to call now, but I could not call by, with just me sitting there. So I called my husband. He was going to the shower. He had his towel around him already. And I said, babe, come. And I said, sit by me. I'm going to call that, that person, but I cannot do it by myself. I need you to be there with me. So he said, okay, he sat next to me and I made that call. When I called the person, the phone was just calling, calling. It wasn't ringing, it was calling. And I said in my head, Lord, I'm calling. But if that person doesn't answer, if the phone doesn't ring and that person doesn't answer, I'm not gonna call again tonight. And it kept on calling and I held it. I said, I'm gonna let it die off on its own. And eventually I saw ringing. I was like, oh, and then, you know, your heart sinks. And then it kept, it started ringing. And after a little while, the person answered. When a person answered, Lord, I had asked God for strength. And I spoke to the person. I said to that person, I said to him, hi. And, and the person answered, and I, and, I, and I told the person who was calling. And I said, are you alone? And he said, yes. And I had said, if there were people with him, I would not say because I am not calling for trouble. I just want to say, I forgive you. Then when he said to me, no, there's nobody with me, I said, okay, here's the reason I'm calling you. I'm calling you to tell you that I forgive you for the things that you have done to me. And he said, what did I do? And I said, and I said to him, you, me, and I am telling you that I forgive you. And he said, but I can't remember doing that to you. And I said, look, you know what you did to me. I know what you did to me. God knows what you did to me. And he said, but I can't remember. I said, you can't remember? Okay, here. And I started, blah, blah, blah. You remember on that day when so-and-so was in the kitchen cooking outside? You remember you used to put me in? I started to tell him what he did to me. And, I, 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 and he was like, I don't remember. I said, okay, you don't remember? Here it is, 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 here it is. You want context? Here is context. So I said to him, you did this to me. You put me to sit on your neck and you did that to me, pretending to play with me. It was, there was a Saturday when my parents went to church and it was raining. It, there was rain and shine and you did this to me. And so and so came in and when the person opened the door, the person came in, you got off of me, you covered me with a white bed sheet. And the person held my head and shook my head like this and said, who is that under there? And you stood by the window. You opened the window. You stood by the window with the person and you all spoke. The mango tree outside, it was raining and the sun was shining and you could see the leaves of the, the tree shining. And the rain, um, the, the water running down in the gutter behind the house. I can remember everything. When I said that to him, he kept quiet. He did not say a word. He just stayed quiet. And I said, I am not calling you to stir up anything. I am just calling you to set you free and to set me free. I forgive you. And he didn't say anything else. And then I said, have a good night. And I hanged up. Lord, have mercy. When I hanged up the phone, I just felt a peace. I just felt light. I, it was different. I can't even explain. It was different. The burden that I had carried for so long, the anger, the pain, the resentment, the depression, the sadness, the anxiety, all of these things were gone instantly. I didn't feel it no more. And my mind, when I was impressed to pray, I got down on my knees and I prayed. And when I started to pray, I said, Lord, I have done it. I have told that person I forgive him. I have forgiven that person. Now the enemy has no power over me. And by the time I started to say that, God, I started to vomit. And I vomit, I tried to call the elder, I couldn't get him. 
I called a sister from church who had just sent me a message. God works in mysterious ways, you guys. When I called her, she picked up the phone right away. When I started to vomit, I ran to my bathroom. And I'm over the toilet, throwing up and throwing up. It's not like throwing up when you have eaten something and you want to throw up. I just started to throw up and it, it was coming with so much pressure, so much power. And I said to her, I think I'm being delivered. And I said, pray. And she started to pray and she kept on praying and I kept on throwing up and I kept on throwing up for a little while. I threw up. God delivered me himself. And when I was done, she prayed with me when we were done. I came back here. My husband stayed on the chair there waiting for me. And I continued praying. And I thank God. And I delivered it all in his hand. To be honest with you, a lot of the times we choose not to forgive. Thinking that when we forgive somebody, we are condoning what that person has done. We are saying it is okay what you did to me. Mm -mm. We have it all wrong. When we don't forgive, we give these people power over us. We give the enemy power over us. We keep ourselves down. We keep ourselves burdened. We keep all these emotions locked up inside of us. And it is all working against us. When we forgive, we set ourselves free. We are doing it for ourselves because the Bible says if we don't forgive, God can't forgive us. We have to let go. And when we do that, we are setting ourselves free. Imagine all the things that we do to God, all the sins that we have committed. What if God were to say like us, I'm not forgiving her. I forgive her and she goes back. I forgive her and she does that. I forgive her. I am not forgiving her. Can you imagine the state that I would be in? If God can forgive me for all the sins that I have done, I can certainly forgive somebody who has done me wrong. I am not saying what they did to me was right. By no means what they did to me was right. It was awful. But by not forgiving, I put myself in a worse state. And by forgiving, I set myself free. I used to sit and cry. I don't do that no more. I used to be burdened down. I'm not like that anymore. Is the enemy still trying to attack me? Yes. And as long as we live in this world, the enemy will always try to attack us. But we have the power. We have the power. We have God on our side. I have God on my side. And I get to tap into that power anytime that I need it. It is always available to me. I, uh, I am a happy person today and I thank God for that. I am a different person today and I thank God for that. Had I stayed there and said, who's going to save me? Who's going to come to help me? I would still be in that state. But because... I decided to save myself because I decided to take that first step. I reach out to God and ask God for help. He came through for me and I give him all the glory, all the honor. I thank you, Lord. Making that call to the persons who hurt me, especially to that man who hurt me. It was one of the hardest things I had to do. It was very hard. But I was determined to get the victory. I was determined to let go. I was determined to let God take control. The pain and the anger, the sadness, the shame, and the depression and anxiety was lifted. I am still on a journey of forgiveness. There are other people that I have to call and let go. Forgiveness was crucial for me. It didn't mean that I condoned what they've done to me. What it meant was setting them free and setting myself free. Today, I feel free from the burdens I used to carry. 
I can focus on God and be a better person. I can see things differently and act differently. When I called the persons that hurt me, I was setting all of us free. If they don't want to acknowledge what they've done, it's up to them. It's up to them. It is between them, their conscience, and God. But I know that I have set myself free. And I'm moving on in the light of God. God, I used to ask, Lord, will I ever be happy? Will I ever enjoy life? Yo, I have a peace within me. I have a joy within me. And it's all because of God. It is all because of letting go. I used to, you know, say, Lord, there is this person inside of me, this bubbly, happy person who wants to come out. But because of all this baggage that I was carrying, this person couldn't come out. But now this person is out. And I love it. I am me. I am me. The real me has come out. Oh Lord, what a joy, what a privilege. Guys, I have come a long way. And, I, and the journey still continues. But where I am today, huh, I am at a better place. I am at a happy place. Are things all perfect in my life? No. No. And as long as we live in this world, everything will not be perfect. But I have inner peace. I have inner joy. And I'm, I'm continuing the journey with God. And God will take me to where I need to be. I just want to encourage somebody today. No matter what you've gone through, there is still hope. There is still light at the end of the tunnel. You can still be that person, that inner person that you have in you. And those of you who have gone through it and are going through it, you know what I'm talking about. This person who wants to come out, let this person out. This child who has gone through all these traumatic events, this child, you need to let go of this child. You will not forget what you've gone through, but you need to let go of this child. Set that child free. And this person that is within you, the you now, needs to come out, needs to shine. Set that person free. Be you. Trust God. He will take you through. Look at me. <laughs> I never thought that I would be able to, to, to film this video today, to make this video today. But look at me. Guys, my friends, they, 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 they will talk to me and say, Pearl, you have come a long way. Pearl, for you to be able to do this, for you to do that. Pearl, that's not you. That wasn't the, the pearl. But look at you today. Look at you shine. You have come a long way. And I'm telling you, I have come this far because of the grace of God. Ha, hallelujah. His mercies are new every morning. His grace is sufficient. Lord, I can't... Uh, I cannot do this without God. I cannot tell you guys about this journey without telling you about God because it's all God. It's all Him. And I am grateful. Father, thank you. And Lord, for those who are watching this video, who are going through what they are going through, Father, I pray that you forgive them, dear Father. Forgive them of their sins. Forgive me of my sins, Father God. And Lord, I pray that you dispatch your holy angels to surround them. Let them feel the presence of God around them, Father God. I pray that you send your Holy Spirit, dear Father, to speak to them, to speak to their hearts, Father God. And to prompt them, dear God, to show them what to do. Give them the strength that they need, Father God, to open up, to call and say, I forgive you. Father, the therapy that they need, dear God, Help them to find the right person to help them. Those who do not have the money to pay for the therapy. The same way you did it for me, God, I'm asking that you do it for them. Send somebody that will be able to help them and that will do it for them at no cost whatsoever, Father God. 
Be with them, be with the family. And I pray, oh God, that you put a, a special covering upon them. Help that no weapon that is formed against them will not prosper, dear God. You said in your word, ask and we shall receive. So God, I'm asking you to bless these people. You said in your word that the, uh, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to you, O oh God. The earth and everything in it belongs to you. So Father, I depend on you to provide for them. Provide the means, provide the therapy that they need. Provide them, dear God. Give them the strength to call. Surround them with people, dear Father. The right people that will help them and encourage them on this path. Because Lord, me being here today is not me alone. Other people came, they helped me, they supported me. I'm asking you, oh God, to give them that very same thing that you have given me. Bless them, provide for them, and keep them, dear Father. You said in your word, whatever we ask in your name, you will give it to us. So, Father, let your name be praised and let your name be, be, be glorified. You are a God who honors your word. Your word is higher than your name. So, Lord, I know that you will do it. And even now, I'm thanking you, dear Father, for the people that will be blessed by you. You have made provisions for them. So, Father, I'm asking you that you show us answer to our prayers. And let your name be glorified. Let your name be praised, O oh God. Father, I thank you for hearing up my, uh, my prayer. Because in your word, you said before we come, you have already heard. And whilst we are yet speaking, you will hear. So thank you, God, for hearing our prayer. And thank you for answering. Holy Spirit, I ask that you please intercede on all of our behalfs. Because you know better what to ask for. And Lord, whatever it is that I've failed to ask for, I pray, oh God, that you will grant it to each and every. Everyone who has watched this video, who are going through what they're going through, you know, they might not have gone through childhood tra trauma. They might not have been through what I have been through, but Lord, every one of us have gone through some kind of ordeal or the other. So Lord, I pray that you fix it for them, fix it for us, and let your name be glorified. Let your will be done, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. I ask it all. Amen. Be blessed, you guys. And please, continue on your journey. God is able. He is faithful. Him who has promised. So trust Him. Until next time, take care of yourself. God bless.